Everybody, thank you once again for watching. This is Bruce Lofson from Sunridge of Nevada with, guess what, another video for you guys to watch, enjoy, and of course comment on. Once again, before I even begin, I gotta thank my agent slash producer slash mentor because he picks these great songs and he's great. That's all I'm gonna say and leave it at that. Um, the song he picked was by, obviously, Joyner Lucas. The song is called Sorry. This came from his fourth mixtape, 508-507-2209. Um, and very, 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 very powerful song. Uh, I was shocked at how many views this man's received on this song, over 35 million. So uh, I want to break it down. There's some things I sort of want to share with you, give you guys some insights, and talk about suicide, which obviously with the recent slate of celebrities unfortunately committing suicide uh, has achieved national attention once again. I want to talk in the video, which I'm not giving anything away, there is a scene of spirituality when a minister comforts him at the end of the video, I'm not giving anything away. What I want to talk about was attitudes of organized religion towards suicide, because that's a big issue. And I want to share with you just different insights and how different religions view suicide. So here we go. Um, under Judaism, suicides are frowned upon, and if it does happen, you are buried in a separate part of the Jewish cemetery, and you may not receive certain mourning rites. Actual practice, however, every means is used to excuse suicide, determining that the person was not in their right mind, or the person committing suicide must have repented at the performing the deadly act, but, but shortly before death occurs. Okay, and also, just for those of you who are not familiar with Judaism, there's a long-standing tradition, actually, hey, I'm sorry, not, his, not tradition, that's the wrong term, long-standing history in Judaism, where it was also acceptable to other alternatives. For anyone that has any knowledge of Judaism today, where has been to Israel, you've been to Masada, which is a fortress, the, cliff, the cliffside fortress that was up there. And what happened was, is that the destruction of the Second Temple, members of the Sakari fled Jerusalem and settled in the mountaintop fortress, using, using it as a base to harass the Romans. 960 members of Masada collectively committed suicide in 73 CE, rather than be conquered and enslaved by the Romans. Each man killed his wife and children, then the men drew lots and killed each other until the last man killed himself. So that's how Judaism looks at it. They don't want you to do it, it's frowned upon, but they try and give allowances for it when it does happen. Christianity. Now, nothing in the Christian Bible explicitly prohibits suicide. In fact, the Bible does not condemn it, and there are people in the Bible who did commit suicide. However, many current Christian dogmas take an unfavorable view of suicide. Also, by the way, Christianity does not say that suicide is an unforgivable sin, although some other religions might. However, um, the point is this. The church prays for people who have taken their own lives and that they understand that grave psychological disturbances could have taken place. Anguish or grave fear can diminish the responsibility of the one committing the suicide. The Catholic Church used to deny suicides of Catholic funeral mass and burial. However, the church has since changed this practice. Okay, because now you have other branches of Christianity. Protestants, Evangelicals, Pentecostals have often argued that suicide is self-murder and anyone who commits it is sinning. And it is the same if the person murdered another human being. Now, you look at also uh, other denominations of Christianity may not condemn those who commit suicide per se as committing a sin. So, in the, for instance, for Mormons, Church of Jesus Christ, Latter Day Saints, Suicide is generally viewed as wrong, although the victim may not be considered responsible for the act, depending on the circumstances. Okay, now we go to another very popular religion, Islam. All Muslim scholars and clerics consider suicide forbidden, and similarly include suicide bombing as being equally forbidden. And they have various quotes in the Quran. Now, there are some groups, of course, that look at that martyrdom operations, believes that their actions fulfill the operations of jihad, but that's not the majority of Muslims around the world. Now, Indian religions, Hinduism. In Hinduism, suicide is spiritually unacceptable. This is considered a violation of the code, ahamsa, nonviolence, and therefore equate, equally equating sinful as murdering another. Why do I want to take the time off to go about religions is because religion 
plays such a huge part in suicide. And in the video, when I go over the lyrics, you're going to understand when I break down the video, that's where it goes as well. Now, here we go. This video is very, 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 very interesting because it, to me, it wasn't the vi obviously it's a video, but it's also a movie short. And interestingly enough, he directed this video, helped to direct the video. And what's interesting to me is that I looked at this as shorts in the movie, like different scenes. And that's something I actually enjoy myself when I watch a movie. Sometimes I'll watch a movie and it's, what's more exciting to me is the actual scenes in the movie than the whole movie in total. And he has very, very distinct moments where he changes his focus and, his, and he changes his script and pitch to focus on different things. That's what I'm going to do here today. Now, the comments for this video were very, 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 very powerful because it's clearly this video touched a nerve. Um, you changed my life. I broke down weeping. I have been there. I suffered from depression. This affected my family. No one talked about it. You gave me a chance to open up, a chance to heal. So credit to him for making this happen and taking what's been a very, still a very, very short time uh, ago, a very taboo subject, and breaking it down for the masses. For those of you, and everyone has watched the video, so I'm not, you, again, I want to, you, you get the idea. He starts off with his friend committing, talking slowly and then kind of working up to it. Go ahead and call me a coward and say I'm not strong because I'm not like you. Go ahead and call me crazy because I live in a maze. Tell me how about you. I think I live in my head sometimes I think that I'm dead. I hide behind my youth. No, I've been losing my mind and I'm a little behind. Step inside my shoes. This is very common for a suicidal victim to think this way because they feel alone, helpless, and hopeless, with nothing to look forward to, and they're, they feel they're on an island where they're going down a black hole and there's no way getting out. The best way to describe this for someone who's been suicidal, who, who's in the throes of feeling suicidal, is from the movie Get Out that came out about almost, almost two years now, wow. But there's a scene where the, where the main player falls back when she does a hypnotist on him, and he's looking up, he's looking up, and he's like in this black setting, and he can see her with the light. That's what people who are suicidal feel like, that everything is coming in on them and closing in on them. Okay, because I've never been happy with myself. I don't need no one feeling bad for me, trying to offer me pity and throw jabs at me. Want to give me advice and then laugh at me behind closed doors. Just close the door, let me be myself. Let me be by myself. Yeah, close the door, let me commit the act because I can't cope anymore. I can't do it, I can't do it, I can't do it, I can't do it. And at this point, Joyner is sitting reading the suicide note, and he's the person's behind him with the noose on his neck, and now he just basically is going to, you know, commit the act. So, I'm tired of living, I cry, I hear it's easy to die. I want to see for myself, I know that sounds crazy for everyone to everyone else, but I'm depressed as blank, stressed as blank, ain't no medicine that could cure what's the test is drugs. I mean, I need extra love and that ain't even enough. Said that ain't even enough and where the blank is God. God, God! Okay, and you get to the point where he's at the climax of feeling depressed, hopeless, lonely. He had a comment, I need extra love. It's amazing to me how many people in the course of my clinical profession need someone to say, I give a damn about you, I give a crap about you, I love you, you're special, you mean the world to me. So many people, white, black, brown, yellow, walk in a void. As I've said before, when we finally get to Area 51 and we talk to the captured Martians and the guys from Pluto and from Venus and from another solar system, they're going to say the same exact thing. I suffer from depression and I'm lonely and I'm looking for someone to connect with. And we're seeing this more and more and more, despite all the technology, all the million apps you have to connect with people, people are feeling more alone than ever. It's amazing to me. The more apps, the more loneliness. The more uh, things you can get into, the more depressed I am. It's, it's, there's, there's something going on and we're not catching it. Um, he goes, Dan, maybe I ain't believing enough, and today we're going to see if he's real, and if he is, I guess I'm probably going to hell. 
Why do I want to take the time out to discuss the various religions of the world? Is because even people that are not religious, there is, I mean, we understand the people who are atheists, but that's a small minority of the world. People do believe in something. They may not be super religious, super devout, go to church or synagogue or the mosque every day or every weekend, but you got you do believe there's something out there, some kind of higher power. And you do believe in your head, like I'm committing a, like a mortal sin by ending my life prematurely. And oh, you know what? Uh, now I guess today we're gonna find out if God really does exist. Hello, you know, let's find out. And, and if he's, I guess I'm probably going to hell. So people still have that feeling of heaven and hell, did I live a good life? And then, look, I ain't want to die like this. I ain't picture my life like this. They don't know what it's like like this, pretending I'm happy so I can smile like this. This, is, this takes place at 112. And Joyner at that point looks up. He does as well with the video. He looks up and he's looking at the spot where the noose would have been, where his friend would have been hanging. So it's like, it's like a visual, it's a visual motif. Also, I want people to realize I saw at least six different times a gramophone in the video. That wasn't done there idly either, I believe. The gramophone, at the turn of the century, seances were very, very popular. Why? Communicate with the dead. Gramophone was invented by Thomas Edison. We give out history lessons here also. It's not just about deconstructing music. But Thomas Edison invented the gramophone, which is the first time you'd actually put a disc onto a device and actually hear music on a commercial level. He also invented the spirit phone, which didn't hit. Um, so that, that was a separate issue. But he invented the gramophone, and people that would do these seances would use the gramophone as a way of connection. You'd hear squeaky voices, scratches. That was a way of manipulating the audience into believing that someone from the spirit world was talking to them. Just another example was that the writer of um, Sherlock Holmes, Arthur Conan Doyle, he spent a lot of his time debunking these seances because he felt that they were false and only did harm to the people who had died, not died, people who were living and taking advantage of their agony and suffering trying to contact the dead. Okay, but he looks up like this and you get the sense of like that's where he did it. That's where the act took place. And trust me, from talking to plenty of people whose members, family members committed suicide, they don't stay in that house very long. They get out. Because you walk by and you see that it's so debilitating and so horrific, you got to leave. You gotta, just got to get out of the house. Okay. And then, pretend I'm happy so I can smile like you. Then at 121, he's, now he has the gun because in the, in the video, the noose broke. Okay. He slams to the ground. And he's still alive. Not uncommon. And I wanted to share this. I must talk about this before. Most suicides are not successful the first time. Why? The person has to get courage, in a sense, to do it right. So the first time is like a teaser. Um, the noose didn't break. I mean, the noose broke. The exhaust would have a little bit of, of air opened on the side of the garage. Um, you know, the gun didn't have the right bullets, you know, whatever. There's a reason they try and avoid it, but that second time they get the confidence, like, wow, I can make this happen. I can control literally my own death. So now this is the second time he's now writing a letter. Sometimes I wonder if I ever act like you. Could I finally fit in and maybe relax like Wu? Or would you feel lost without me? Because honestly, I think the world is better off without me common refrain that if I'm dead the world is better off without me and no one thinks about the consequences for those that are left behind and it's devastating 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 and my mind spinning this is the line finish truth is I don't care how they feel about my feelings I made up my mind I'm going out like Robin Williams of course the comedian who committed suicide three years ago I guess I'm not the ordinary people of John Legend the singer and I've been suicidal since the day I was nine. Blank. Okay, the day I was nine. I've been tired of being bullied because I stay out of the fire. Grandma told me I should take it one day at a time. And damn it, not look at me now. Blank. And then, here's the thing too. People think that people who commit suicide are so deadly serious and just are, are zombies with their emotions. Because you're going through a million emotions. That's what's happening. And now he's realizing the second time is the real time.
No more play acting, so to speak. No more suicide acting. I'm going to make it happen this time. So now, um, blank F side. Scraping paper. You know, he's, he's furiously writing. Look, just know it's a new day. But if you're reading this, then it's probably too late. Bam! Okay? And at 2 o'clock, he shoots himself in front of Joyner who's still reading like this, and now he looks up, and now it's immediate, now it's real. See, the first time he was like this, he was glancing, okay, because of what, it didn't really happen. Now it's real, now it's real. And now what happens is, he walks in, and he sees the body, and now it's visceral, now it's immediate, now literally it's in your face. And then now you have this stanza. Just make sure you tell my family it's okay, I'm sorry, but it's too late, I'm sorry. So much weighing on me. I don't want to live to say another day, I'm sorry, but I can't stay, I'm sorry. So much weighing on me. And then he does, says this again. Just make sure you tell my family it's okay, I'm sorry, it's too late, I'm sorry. So much weighing on me. I don't want to live to see another day, I'm sorry, but I can't stay, I'm sorry. So much weighing on me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. He does this six times, okay, in the song, where he does a seven, so he does seven line stanza, which I'm going to talk about in a second. It's not done randomly either. And this is the background. The bits is the bridge, okay? Coming to terms, and now you see Joyner like this, like he's in anguish. And he's coming to terms with his explode, he's exploding with his grief, his anger, and depression. Now, before we go on to the next piece, What's interesting to me is that what he's doing is he's letting people realize it's human and it's normal to vent. Because there's no such thing as a pleasant suicide. Like, I'm so proud of what he did or what she did. Thank you. I won't be emotional at all. It was the right thing to do. He was in a lot of pain. She was suffering. There's no consequence. <sighs> Better place right now. The vast majority of people, particularly if you're young and healthy, it's one thing if you, you know, end stage chemo, end stage breast cancer, I get that. You know, you're just being pumped and kept alive by drugs. I understand that part. I don't care. Someone takes their life prematurely, it affects you. And what he showed in that video is often not described is the people that are left behind, how angry they are at what this person's done. And what Jordan Lucas did really well in this was express that. Because after so much weighing on me, there's a break. The next scene is at the chapel, at the church. And people are coming up, white, black, young, old, and they're just sitting there in the pews, and they're walking up like numb. Because that's how you feel, you feel numb. And then they walk out. And then what happens is, he, <sighs> volcano. I hope you got what you wanted. I hope you're finally happy. It's too late for you, but going out of my mind. You know how many times I've done prayed for you? I hope you hear me, damn it, because I got so much blank in me that I want to say to you. I used to shine, now I'm all in the dark. I remember I used to tell you to follow your heart, but God damn it, look at you now. It's all of your fault. Your fault. You did this act. Your fault. How could you? Maybe it's my fault. I should have paid more attention to what you've been doing. There's the guilt. I should have been more involved with you. Maybe I should have been more of an influence. I can't believe that you're dead. I, and then he goes, normal reactions. These last four lines and this. I read your letter and all I could do was have mixed feelings about it. But I'll forever be attached to you, damn. Part of me feels bad for you. A part of me feels like you're weak and I'm mad at you. You know what? That's what people will say alone and privately and with family because that's what they do feel. I, I read your letter, okay? It feels like you're weak and I'm mad at you. Have mixed feelings. And both suicides this past week, which we read about, of course, if you under a rock, Kate Spade and last week Anthony Bourdain, they both left letters to their children. You know, and you're going to read that letter about six billion times, 
and trying to make sense out of maybe two, three pages and put everything in totality, that's not so simple. This guy's writing it like this, like, you know what? You could write a book. You could write the Bible. You could write War and Peace, and it's still not going to make sense to the survivors. And I don't mean to be insensitive, but I don't understand how we couldn't prevent this blank. You took the easy way out. God damn it, you're dead. I mean, look what you did. I'm so blank upset. How could you be so selfish? Blank, how could you be so selfish? Now you're gone. You done left me so helpless. I wonder what God thinks as he brings up God again, Joiner. I hope you're in God's place behaving yourself. That's from 347 to 408. You're angry. This is another snapshot of the video. And you're bitter and you feel for the person let you down. How 408, let you down. How do I go on without you? Of course, there is a void. Do never kid yourself. For those thinking about suicide, watching this video, and for those in the aftermath, there will be a void. There's going to be an emptiness. This person's no longer here. Where are they? Okay? I hope you're in God, you and God's place behaving yourself. Now, the next bridge from 408 to 423. Yo, what the blank you got to say for yourself? Say for yourself. Look, I really feel lost without you. I hate the fact you think the world is better off without you. And my mind's spinning. This is the line finish. Truth is, I don't care how you feel about my feelings. And I'd be lying if I told you I'm fine. Listen. I know that you can hear me. All I need is like five minutes. Please. Maybe I'm pretending. Maybe you're not dead. Maybe it's all a crazy joke, crazy dream. Ha ha, ha ha, ha ha. Fooled you, fooled you. It's real. And that's what's so hard about this. I'll tell you something that, you know, you get old, you go through enough life experiences. I went to a funeral, a person passed away from a heart attack. And I went to the funeral home, and he happened to be Latino, and he's, they had him dressed up as an open casket. And the way the lighting and the makeup looked, I thought he was alive. That was my initial impression. He was alive. He's going to get up and look at me and say, Bruce, <laughs> I'm alive. I'm alive. I could not believe he was dead. And when I left the funeral home that night, I just stood by my car for like 20, 30 minutes, just walking around like the parking lot with a block around it, just trying to comprehend what just took place to see a very close friend of mine dead. Heart attack, not suicide, but messed me up. And I still think about the guy all the time. When I walk the halls of certain buildings we walk together, or hospitals we were in together, I think of it. You know why? That's the void. Okay. Now, at 424, here comes the minister. I'm sorry this is something that we could both figure out. I wish I could hear you now. Is your soul missing? I wonder if you could do it again. Would you do it differently? Great lyric. Would you do it again? And here's a question about that. The answer to that is, there's been a million um, observations and case studies of people that have committed suicide but tried to and did not, for whatever reason, came back to life, they could revive them. And a lot of them will say, I wouldn't do this again. I would never do this again. And there are those that would do it again and again and again because they're just so unhappy. So it's very, very individualistic. So are you happy now? Was it meant for you, Brody? Did the heavens support it? Tell me what death is like. I'm going backwards. Are you blank happy now? Did you get what you wanted? Isn't this what you wanted? Okay, so how does God play in all of this? Because suicide affects all religions. That's what I want to talk about prior. And then as he's talking about God, the minister walks in, but he walks in quietly, non-judgmental. He's walking in because he senses the turmoil, obviously, how can you miss it, of what the person's feeling. And then I feel a temperature falling. You were suicidal back day, you were nine. Yeah, even back then you was nine. We, were li we was living on the edge, couldn't stay out of the fire. Grandma told us we should take it one day at a time, and damn it, look at you now. Blank, but it's a new day, and if you can't hear me, it's probably too late. And the minister in the background of 442 is just listening, and then he says, blank, blank. Reality is set in. His friend is dead, and he's not coming back. 
And then the rest of the song, he doesn't do any more talking. It's just a chorus of this stanza. Just make sure you tell my family it's okay, I'm sorry. But it's too late, I'm sorry. So much weighing on me. I don't want to live to see another day, I'm sorry. But I can't stay, I'm sorry. So much weighing on me. And then it repeats itself again and again and again. Okay? Does it four times in this thing till it ends? Does it twice before? But I want to share this about the stanza, seven line stanza. A stanza is the proper name for what's commonly known as a verse. And they all fall into different scales. And what I want to do is just let everyone know that what he's doing is not just unnoticed. A seven line stanza of any kind is called a septet. The most common such form, and apparently the only one to have a special name, is called a rhyme royal, which uses a scheme A, B, A, B, B, C, C, the lines having 10 syllables each. Usually what's called an iambic pentameter. Rhyme royal is also sometimes known as the Troilus stanza, T-R-O-I-L-U-S. Again, a little history lesson here as well, a little music lesson. And then it goes back and back and it goes again and again four more times. Just make sure you tell my family it's okay, I'm sorry, but it's too late, I'm sorry, so much weighing on me, I don't want to live the scene of the day, I'm sorry, but I can't stay, I'm sorry, so much weighing on me. And the last, set, the last scene is basically Joan Royal collapsing in the arms of the minister and just crying, and just, just weeping. And the minister picks him up as he falls to the floor, and it's like this. Hugs him. Being a human being, just be there. What's the point, okay? Suicide is devastating, all right? Religions today understand this and are becoming more aware of mental illness. And no longer are we casting people aside. What's amazing is that he had an African-American minister walk in, and 20 years ago, that would have been unheard of. To openly acknowledge suicide in the black community, God forbid. Jewish community, unheard of then either. Never would have been discussed. And every other religion, no, 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 no. But now we understand it's a national epidemic, it's a national crisis. There's 45,000 suicides a year, and I'm telling you from experience and from reading reports, that number is vastly underreported. You take the opioid crisis today, people getting multiple overdoses. What, you think they want to just, they, they, people look forward to an overdose? There's a reason why they want to end their life. They're so miserable. For those of you who are watching this video, and if you're suicidal, okay, and if you've been around someone who's been suicidal, don't be afraid to reach out for help. Talk to the person. Are you okay? Is everything all right? You may literally be saving a life. And for those of you that are thinking about it, just remember, there's always help and hope out there. We've gotten dozens of comments from the videos, particularly on Chester and from Mike Shinoda, about people that, that went through hell, literally, and talked about being suicidal and music helped save them. And this video clearly has helped a lot of people that have been through it, were experienced it, were have seen it, were have felt it, get the help. We are all about the prevention and getting stronger. Please, for those of you that are watching, comment. What does video do for you? Did it make you feel okay to vent and scream and shout? Guess what? It doesn't make you a weak person. It makes you feel normal. It makes you feel like you're alive. You're angry. You should be angry. You're missing the person. That's normal. But don't feel guilty to have emotions. Find the right way to express it. Don't go down a path of drugs or alcohol or you know anything that's going to be destructive to you. Look for the right alternative. Somber video, but in light of what's been going on in America and around the world, a necessary video, a vital video. Please keep on watching. Please keep on commenting. Sunridge of Nevada, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Much love, again.